Welcome to the AIM Learn Fast e-training series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training of your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. Hello, this is a fairly brief introduction to the basic configuration and setup of your MXL2 and MXG AIM Sports data loggers using the Race Studio 3 configuration software. There will be more Learn Fast training videos coming in the near future with more detail on specific functions within the software. To first start the process, obviously we have the, the, the Race Studio 3 software open, and then we'll click on the New button to start a new configuration. And this will open this new configuration window. This will give us a chance to choose the device we want to create a new configuration for. In this case, we will select the MXL2 choice, but the steps would be very similar if you, if you selected an MXG. And this will open a new dialog box, and the first thing we should do is give the configuration a name. In this case, we will call it LearnFast MXL2. The next thing to do in this dialog box is to choose an ECU manufacturer, and click here to choose that manufacturer. And the Choose ECU window will open. And for this example, we will select BMW as the ECU manufacturer. And then we will select the BMW Mini as the ECU model. And finally, to finish this dialog box, we click on the OK button. And the last thing to do in this dialog box is to add a comment if you want one. I suggest you do, so select the text box and then type in your comment and then click on the OK button. Okay, now we have created and saved the LearnFast MXL2 configuration as shown here by this highlighted tab. It is the active one we're working on. We also have a number of tabs down a little bit lower that allows us to modify this configuration. Right now, we're looking at the Channels tab. We can enable or disable channels. Select the Channel 01 checkbox to enable the channel. Now that we've enabled the channel, we can edit all the parameters about that channel. To start that process, select the Channel 01 name to edit that channel. And this opens the Channel Settings window. In this case, we want to configure this channel as an oil pressure channel. So the first thing we need to do, starting from the top down, is to rename this channel Oil Pressure. Next, we need to select the channel function. This is a new feature in Race Studio 3. To select the function, click on the Function Selection button. Then select Pressure from the list, and then finally Oil Pressure. Next, we need to select the sensor we have connected to our data system. To start that process, click the Sensor Selection button. And then select the sensor from the list. And next is the sampling frequency. Click the list selection button. And select the menu item. In this case, 10 Hz. And next we need to configure the unit of measure. To start that process, click on the list selection button. And select the menu item. In this case, PSI. To set the display precision, click on the list selection button and select the menu item, in this case, one decimal point. And the last setting in the channel settings box is the measure filter level. To see the choices, click the list selection button. And in this case, we do not want any filtering, so we will select the no filter menu item. And to finish the channel settings, we need to click on the save button. So as you can see, we have successfully modified and saved this oil pressure channel. You should do that with all of the channels in your list to make sure they are set up correctly for your situation. Now we will move on to the next tab. Let's select the ECU Stream tab. The ECU Stream tab shows us the channels that are available from the ECU manufacturer and model that we chose earlier. All of these channels can be modified just as we did with our oil pressure sensor. or we can also change our ECU very easily from here by clicking on the Change ECU Selection button. And this opens the Choose ECU window. 
here highlighted is the ECU manufacturer and model we already have chosen, and we can edit those and select different ones if we want to at this point. In this case, we do not want to make any changes, so we will click on the Cancel button. Next, we will select the CAN2 Stream tab. Your MXL2 and MXG data logger has the ability to stream data through a second CAN line. This is the area where you will configure that. We will be creating a more in-depth LearnFast video about this subject later. For now, we will select the Math Channels tab. To add a math channel onto your MXL2 or MXG, click the Add Channel button. And this opens the Select a Math Channel window. Right now you can see that there are four math channels that are pre-built for you. This is an area that we expect to add more math channels in the future. Later I expect that we will build a more in-depth Learn Fast training video on math channels. So for now click on the Cancel button. And next we will select the Parameters tab. Under the Parameters tab is where we configure the lap detection methods and the start data recording methods. The first thing that we can do under our lap detection is how long the lap time is held on the display after you pass the start finish line beacon. In this case, it is set for two seconds. Let's select the two seconds box. And we will change it to 10 seconds. Under the lap detection area, you can choose GPS beacons or optical beacons. If you choose the GPS beacon, you have three choices to the track widths. The car bike selection and boat selection are hard coded and you cannot change those distances. But we do also have a custom button that allows you to set that to what you wish to have it as. Let's click on the custom button. And then select the input text box and input 150 feet. If you want to have your laps detected by an optical beacon, simply select the optical beacon radio button. But in this case we want our laps detected by the GPS beacon, so I will select the GPS beacon radio button. A new feature in Ray Studio 3 is how we can define how we start the data recording. We can do this based on conditions that are met, and we can do that with any and all conditions. To change between any and all conditions, click on the toggle button. This changed it to any of the following conditions. Let's change it back to all of the following conditions by clicking on the Any Toggle button. So now let's take a look at this and understand how the data will begin recording on your MXL2 or MXG. The way you would read this is data recording will start if all of the following conditions are true and we only have one condition right now and it would read as the RPM is greater than 1000. But 1000 maybe is a little bit too high, so let's lower that to 500 by clicking in the input text box. And replacing that text with 500. So as it sits right now, our data logger will start recording data when the RPM is greater than 500 RPM. But we can stack conditions. In order to create another condition, select the Add Condition button. And here is our added condition. Now let's go through the options and change what we need to. So we first select the channel list selection button. And this opens the select channel window. Here we can select any source of channels, in this case we're looking at GPS, and the channel list beneath that source. And we can just select the source and the channel that we want. In this case we're going to leave GPS speed. So we will click on the OK button. OK, we have now selected GPS speed as the channel for our next condition, but now we can select greater than or less than. In order to do that, select the list selection button. In this case, we do want the greater than selection, so we will select the greater than menu item. And finally, we need to enter the GPS speed value. 31.1 might be a little higher than I would like, so we need to select the input text box and enter 20 miles an hour. OK, now it seems to me that we have a pretty good set of conditions that start our data recording on our MXL2 or our MXG data logger. 
So the way you would read this is, if all of the following conditions are true, if the RPM is greater than 500 and the GPS is greater than 20 miles an hour, data recording will begin on your data logger. And this ends the basic configuration and setup using Race Studio 3, Part 1. Part 2 will cover the remainder of the tabs, shift lights and alarms, display, smarty cam stream, and can expansions. Also in Part 2, we will cover all these icons across the top. Make sure before you close out your configuration that you save it, and of course, after you save it, you need to transmit it to your MXL2 or MXG. To finish the basic configuration and setup using Ray Studio 3, make sure you watch Part 2. For more AIMSports LearnFast eTraining content and information about upcoming on-site training seminars, visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support. Your source for support and training of AIMSports products when and where you want it.